KQED has a new president and CEO. John Bolin was at KQED for more than a decade and has now returned after four years as chief content officer for PBS. He joins me now to talk about KQED and its future. Welcome home, John. Thank you, it's great to be back. So what did you bring back to us from, uh, from PBS? Well, I, I learned a lot uh, during my time working at the national level and really had the opportunity to actually see how special uh, the Bay Area is and, and KQED is in, in, in all of public broadcasting across the country. There's very few places that are quite like this, but it's great to be back. Well, you were at this place when you were the first to, I guess, come up with the title of Chief Content Officer. Now, that's an unusual title in television hierarchy. Explain a little bit about that concept and how it's still playing out. Okay. It actually people. originated in in Silicon Valley. So that was the first place I had heard of the title and you're right, it, it wasn't used that much in television. And as we've gone through this digital revolution and the need for bringing together all the platforms, television, radio, online, uh, content for classrooms, mobile phones, it seemed to make sense to have everyone reporting up to one executive who would be in charge of content rather than in charge of just TV or radio or online. Really just trying to break down the silos, as they say. D does that become more complex, though, when you're in a community like ours of such diverse interests? Um, and goals for each, yeah. each community. Well, it, it's complicated no, no matter where you are, simply because we're so used to specializing. People who specialize in television or specialize in radio or specialize in online. But what's interesting is that consumers are really leading the way because as you know, we and, and especially our children and grandchildren use every kind of media. So nothing's going away, we're just adding. So we have television, we have radio, people both watch television and listen to the radio online as well as interact with the producers of the content, with each other. It, it really becomes more of a community gathering place rather than just a place to consume content. Mm -hmm. You're in the Bay Area, so when you talk about consolidating decision making, how hard a job was it for you to convince people that that was a good thing, that it wouldn't impact the content that we receive from KQ? You know, people are resistant to change, mm -hmm. so there's no question about that. But I think it, it, it really amounted to keeping our eye on our public service mission. And, and if the people of the Bay Area need us to serve them on multiple different media platforms, then we want to be there to do that. And the thing that I found both at PBS and at KQED is, and as you know, because you're one of the, the people here, we're all here for the same reason, really to serve the public. We're a public service organization, and, and as the people we serve are changing, we need to change with them. And I think when we look at it that way, if we look externally instead of internally and think about the community, then it's a little easier to make the changes. Mm. And I ha have, or are we in the midst of a change in terms of those people who we're serving as we've made this expansion into these these new areas of communication? We are, we are in the midst of an amazing change. One of the things I had the opportunity to do when I was working at PBS headquarters was talk with people at a lot of other media organizations and get the opportunity to see how things are happening in other communities and also look at aca in academia what are people who study history and study media thinking of this. And there are a number of experts who believe that this change we're going through with digital technology and what it's doing to communications actually is the biggest revolution since the invention of the printing press. And one of the reasons we're having as much turmoil as we're having right now is because that just throws everything you know, into a confusing state now. After the invention of the printing press, one of these professors reminded me there was a hundred years of war and strife and complete confusion. And I'm not suggesting that we're gonna have a hundred years of it, but we've certainly been through several years. And, and as you can see, what it's doing to the newspaper business and, and, and news gathering in general is really extraordinary. 
it impacts this program because we depend a great deal upon the coverage from the print media for the reporters who come on for our news segments because they're the guys with the deep pockets of knowledge and that landscape is changing. Um, is KQED building its own well of well-informed people who can fill in that those gaps that some of them being left by? We're looking at doing sales. that. We're looking really at doing two things. One would be Yes, actually expanding KQED's own capability to do enterprise reporting and to be out trying to fill some of the gaps that have been created by the fact that there are fewer newspaper reporters out there. Uh, but the second thing I think we really need to do, and it, it, it's something we're going to have to look at in a number of areas, is partner with other institutions. And as you know, we have partnerships with the Center for Investigative Reporting. We have partnerships with the San Francisco Chronicle and the San Jose Mercury News. And I think we're going to need to do even more of that. I think that a number of institutions like-minded who care about having an informed citizenry, which is, of course, critical in a democracy, need to work together to fill these gaps. I just don't think any one organization is going to be able to do it. And I think a KQED being a nonprofit, we're pretty non-threatening in, in terms of the commercial media. We're not competing with them for, for every advertising dollar, but we can join with them to serve the public. What do you see as KQED's greatest strength? And maybe those things in which you would like to see change? To me, the greatest strength is actually where we are. Mm -hmm. This, uh, the, the other thing that I learned working at the national level and, and having the opportunity to see public broadcasting as it exists in other markets, KQED is a very special place because this is a very special community, Northern California. It's probably the most receptive and supportive region of the country for public broadcasting. Uh, the, the, the millions of people who, who watch KQED television and listen to KQED radio are much larger in number than you find in, in a lot of other communities. So I think that's very special. Uh, we have, we're blessed being here. Uh, and and as, as far as the, the challenges, the challenge uh, hasn't changed that much for public broadcasting, it's funding. And it's even more so now in this new digital environment because as you know, you still have hundreds of thousands of viewers watching your show, but they're also going online. And they're even interacting with you and, and this week in Northern California online. Well, that extra work and extra media platform requires additional funding for us to be, be able to use or even experiment with these new platforms. And I think a lot of people thought when the digital re revolution began that television and radio were going away. Mm -hmm. And I think you can even remember, you probably had people on the show 10 years ago from Silicon Valley saying the end of television as we know it. Well, television as we know it is still going strong and so are many other means of, of, of reaching the public. So we're spread pretty thin and I think we need to find new sources of support. To which, which brings us to the expansion of KQED's imprint. We're part of Northern California Public Broadcasting. How much, uh, how much does that help you or how much does that hurt you in terms of the financial burdens now that you not, maybe not a burden, but obligations to keep all of that moving. Well, I think it helps. Uh, what's interesting uh, in, in terms of the merger with KTEH and San Jose, I think that what it, it made a tremendous sense and, and was really logical because instead of having two public television stations serving some of the same communities and then some different communities competing, they're in total cooperation. And so I think from that point of view, I think we can serve the community better because we don't have any duplicative services now and we can be more efficient and more effective. So I think it's actually a good thing. Any big dream? Well, <laughs> quickly. <laughs> my, big, my big dream would really be that, that this institution becomes the 21st century model for what public service media can be. It sounds like a fantastic dream. Okay, <laughs> Thank you so much, John. We welcome you home. Thank you. <laughs>